folks. Well, you knew we had to do it. We've got the one and only Brian Adamson coming back every week with the specialty of out of state investing. So we got to talk about it. Something I have never done. I've done out of area investing, but never out of state. So Brian, what's going on? Out of state investing. How you doing? I'm doing well, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, out of state is is working, you know. Yeah. It's, working. <laughs> it's, it's working. It's it's, it's kind of cool. You know, I live here in Orlando for the viewers, and so right. I, I mean, as as nice as it is to to do stuff here because it's Orlando, mm -hmm. the margins just aren't there, man. And I'm I'm spoiled in the Midwest in my market. You know, I don't look at a deal if it's not twenty plus percent nowadays. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so I'm a bit biased that you yeah. know you need to know how to get out of your market and um and really you know delve into some other markets that can be more advantageous. I've got other students here locally in Orlando that are doing things in Memphis right now, um, students doing things in the Carolinas. So I you know not only has it been uh, something that that became a default strategy for me some 12 years ago when I moved to Orlando. Um, but now to be able to show others how to do it, to get out of their markets where they may be challenged in Miami or California, different parts of California, Mike, um, yeah. it's just been, it's been it's been very beneficial for us. Yeah. So one of the things, people, I have a playlist on this channel. It's free, obviously. It's called Deep Dive. You can find on there a deep dive session. I think it was 90 minutes. Might have been two hours with you and Millennial Mike talking about out-of-state investing. So uh, go find it. See why I was so excited to get Brian back uh uh, each week going forward. I do want to touch on a couple of key principles that I believe with out-of-state investing, mm -hmm. because I believe if you do out-of-state investing wrong, you're going to lose your ass. Just going to lose your ass. And if I hear one more person tell me I bought a home for less than the cost of my Tesla, I'm going to pull my hair out. <laughs> the cost of a property doesn't meet, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you bought an $18,000 home. That means nothing to me. Um, so the first thing I want people, what I want to acknowledge is, at least, these are my words, not yours. If you disagree, disagree. Okay. The market doesn't matter. The team, well, the market matters, but the team matters more. You need to have a team on the ground in Memphis or the Carolinas or Detroit or wherever you're at that you trust because boots on the ground matter. Even if you have zoom and facetime and street google street views all this other technology it doesn't matter if you don't have trusted boots on the ground my opinion let me know what you think the most critical part to out-of-state investing next to finding deals with good rois is your boots on the ground like i can i was in michigan last month um i did a five-day challenge and we shot it from studio there and um I looked up and I got on the plane and I was like, I didn't see any of my buildings while I was here. <laughs> and, and, then the, and then the month prior in January, I, I was, I was in Michigan. My, my, my father-in-law passed and we had his memorial. Oh, sorry. And sorry. I was there. For, yeah, man. I thank you, Mike. And I was there for a week and I got on the plane and realized I didn't see any of my properties. So literally it's now March. I haven't seen my properties in since December sometime, early December. Right. And I got all kinds of projects. I mean, we bought another 60 some units last year. So I got projects going on. Yeah. But but today being Monday, we have a standing 630 call with my project manager, which is my boots on the ground, along yeah. with the contractor group. There's another call on Tuesday. There's another call on third. There's a cadence and a rhythm right. to which we structured and we run things. And the business is set up and situated such that I'm getting constant feedback even in the absence of those phone calls, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is transparent. It's all there. Um, I meet with my property management company, the owner and the director, you know, once a month. Um, I get weekly updates. You know, I get as much information as I need. And so, yeah, absolutely, Mike. The most critical piece or pieces are your boots on the ground for sure. Yeah, so I want to I want to walk, again, this is my logic, as you will do, disagree with me, add color around this as you see fit. This is what I think most people get wrong with out-of-state investing. They're chasing the best market. They're going to a fortune magazine or a market watch and they're looking at, Hey, what are the 10 best cities? That doesn't matter. I want you to think about where do you have history? Where do you have somebody you could anchor on? Like 
Do you have a college roommate? Do you have an aunt? And uh, like, is there to me that the the I think you've heard me say this, but is there somebody in that city that will show up at your funeral? Mm. That's a big deal for me because otherwise you're just paying people to tell you things. And my experience with that is they will tell you, they may not lie to you, but they will tell you the rosiest version of what is going on. Right. So I want somebody that will get on a plane and come to my funeral. They'll spend a thousand bucks to come to my funeral because I know they're going to tell me the truth. Right. And I think too many people chase the best market, like the best metrics, the lowest crime, the highest population, whatever. But if you go to, I'm just going to make up a city, Tallahassee, because Fortune said it's the best investor market. And mm -hmm. you know no one, but you start shopping around and you try to get into contract and you don't know anybody, you're probably going to lose your ass. But if you find somebody in Memphis because your college roommate, who you roommate with, is your best man at your wedding, lives in Memphis now, and he's willing to drive by once a month because it's around the block from where he lives, I think that's, I think I, in that is a scenario, I would not buy in Tallahassee. I'd buy in Memphis because I know I got an anchor in my old college roommate. What do you think about that craziness? Yeah. You, I, I think there's some merit to what you're saying for sure. Um, I also, so there's a scripture, right? That says a prophet is not without honor, except for in his own town, in his own land, amongst his own people. Hmm. And, and what Jesus is saying in that scripture is the people closest to you, more often than not, as you evolve into whatever your new capacity is, they don't honor you, right? Mm -hmm. So when I show up in the marketplace as me today, they don't know about the knucklehead I may have been as a teenager or see me through that lens. They see me as who I am today. A lot of the time when you start doing business with those that you were most familiar with in a different season, they don't, they don't appreciate or respect who you are and what you're trying to build in that particular yeah. season. I like okay? it. So I believe that new vision requires new people. And okay. I found that the, the the most fruit that I bear has actually come from new relationships versus ones that I previously had. So, like you know, is, is, is it some merit to being able to pick up the phone and call somebody familiar for sure? I, I don't know that I would put as much stock in that as opposed okay. to finding somebody who I can figure out what their vested interest would be and and be able to adhere to that so for instance awesome. my project manager currently is actually one of my students from several years ago who came in had success and then they have an appetite for for doing project management at scale and okay. so i gave them an opportunity to come into my company and grow with us learn get compensated and um, and not only scale with us, but they could do their own thing on the side, learning our framework all at the same time. Like so, that. you know, it's um, it is important, though, Mike, to have people that at least buy into your vision. Right. I think okay. that getting on the plane to come to your funeral is important. Right. Regardless of who they are. I, I think they need to care that much about you because in your absence, you need them to care about things as if you were there. Right. And yeah, for, for, for me, Brian, it's, it's always the bad news. <clears throat> So I, I was a commission sales leader for 20 years mm -hmm. and I have a saying, and I still believe it today. Bad news does not get better with time. That's right. So I love how you're positioning this. It's, it's a way I've not looked at it. This is why you're an expert on the channel. So let's talk about it. Let's go back to my earlier example of Tallahassee mm -hmm. a place. I don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. Let's assume you're in California, right? Tallahassee is a long way away. So, Help me, give me a few things to think about, about building that anchor or key positions in Tallahassee. And again, the city doesn't matter. The fact is I know no one, but I've read Fortune. I'm going to go here. Where do I start, Brian? I cold call 20 to 30 agents in that market. Ooh. Okay. What are you, what are you digging for? I'm digging for a partner, right? I don't want just an agent. I want somebody who... Number one, understands investors and investing, right? So I'm not looking okay. for a retail agent. I'm looking for somebody that's done the type of things that I'm uh, attempting to do with it with a with another investor at some point. And I'm calling so many of them because if I if I jump at the one that I think makes sense, then I got nothing to compare that to, right? So it's important okay. to have a, a little bit of a, a subset to be able to, you know, delineate between 
who's most advantageous and who isn't in order to work with. Okay. okay. This is why it's so important. So many new investors, they just want to get excited about the first contractor, the first agent, the first. Yeah. Well, I got yeah, the one. How many times you heard? I got the one. I, I got, got the one. I got the one. I'm like, well, dude, I got a hundred. <laughs> I'm going to win. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so that's why I was starting Tallahassee. From there, I was starting to understand what's their bandwidth, right? Do you have contractors? Because if you work with investors, chances are you should already have contractors that you know and that you could recommend that I can go and vet myself. And then coupled with that, they may initially be my quote unquote project manager until I can get more intimate with the marketplace and find somebody locally that already has an appetite for being in that capacity and then seeing that they align culturally, uh, ethically, morally, and have those tough conversations up front to figure out if there's somebody I could bring into the fold. Because I'm a firm believer, no news is bad news. Bad news is good news. Good news is great news, right? Like yeah. So to your to, to echo your sentiment, like no nothing bad gets better with time, right? And, and so you got to be able to get that out there because otherwise you're handcuffing me to 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 run my business the way in which I need to. Give me the bad news, right? Because there's always me. a solution to a problem. Yeah. I, I, I can't guess. I, and I don't read minds. I mean, that's right. That's right. I don't have that skill. I, that was not God given. I did not get the ability to read minds. So I want to try to get a ratio from you and, and I'll try to just define it. If I don't do it well, question me. So you pick Tallahassee, you don't know anybody. What percentage of time, call it that first month is invested in building or identifying your team and team members Versus looking at deals, because I'm going to guess that changes over time. But what, what the first 30 days, what, how does Brian split his time roughly? What's interesting is I still believe that finding the deal always helps to find everything else. Right. So I, I spend okay. probably 60 percent of my time looking for probably even 70. I'll go 70. Okay. I'll go 70 percent looking for deals, 30 for 30 percent starting to figure yeah, out and, pieces and where and where they all fit. Yeah. Okay. Now, over time, I'm guessing that evolves where you, you know, the team starts to function, get together, you're starting to trust, which means you take that time and you add it to the 70%. So you're probably 80, 20, 90, 10 over time, but in the beginning, it's 70, 30. In the beginning of 70, 30. And then once I identify who some of these individuals are, now I spend more time cultivating and, and building those relationships. And I'm actually, I'm, oh, okay. I'm looking for deals less at that point, right? Oh, so the deal, like the deal kind of become the magnet to attract the people that I need because everybody talks to tire uh, kickers every day. So yeah. until you feel up with something real, it's hard to get people motivated into your story, right? See, I like how you pivot that. Okay. Yeah, because again, the thing about out-of-state investing that I see people get so wrong is it is, it, it's not, it, there's no focus on the team communication. Kate, you talked about your cadence Monday at six 30, Tuesday here, Thursday. Nope. Dude, Brian, that's work, man. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> it's crazy that you say that, but it is true. I mean, I, I think I could probably find other things to do at Monday at six 30 with my time. Probably. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, if it keeps me from having to go, and see my properties every single time. I'm, and again, I didn't do that purposely, but okay. looking at it, I'm like, what a blessing that is that I was in town twice and it wasn't something that 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 uh, demanded for me to yeah. be. You didn't have to. I didn't have to. I didn't have to. And so um, so if Mondays at 6.30 and Tuesdays and Thursdays keep me from having to do right. that, I, I'll sign up for that every day of the week. Yeah. The last thing I want to talk about out-of-state investing is... Um, I think there's a pretty good chance that there's more and more people that look at it, especially if they live on the coasts, mm -hmm. right? And and now probably the Sun Belt as well, because um, you know people have been talking about a housing crash forever. We've had some price drops. Some cities have been hard, harder than the other, but it's it's not the fifty, it's not the eighty percent, right? You and I experienced, at least I did, a seventy five percent collapse in my market. Do you remember what your market went down, peak to trough in the last crisis? Ninety percent. Yeah, it was bad, right? Not so even. again, we we we've been through that. We it's not coming back, right? That kind of steep <laughs> decline. Um, as as more and more people start to realize that's not coming, I think more people look to out of state. So uh, I know you're doing a lot there. You have a YouTube channel now. 
uh, where you, you talk about this. Where can people follow you? Because I'm not that guy. We're going to get you once a week, but you're putting out a lot of content. Where can they find you? Yeah, Brian Adamson Official on Instagram and then uh, Brian Adamson Real Estate on YouTube. Folks, and do we're me a favor. We're constantly talking about out of state investing. You know, yeah. yeah. Folks, do me a favor. Leave comments below about questions you have about out of state investing. I will team up and make sure Brian and maybe even Millennial Mike answer them uh, as we go forward. Brian, thank you for coming back every week. I appreciate you. Yeah, Mike. Can can I just add one thing to something you just said? Go for it. If, if people, because it's so scary to me, if people start expanding and want to invest out of state because they think that it's cheaper, that's one of the fastest ways for you to start losing money and having problems in your life. Trust Tell me this. Have you have you heard have you ever heard anybody say the phrase "I bought a house for less than my Tesla"? Have oh, you heard I, that? I have. Dude, excuse and, me. And why? I just, why, and I why just, does that matter? It's, it's crazy, Mike. And I just watched a video on YouTube yesterday where these these two loan officers were being interviewed about the Detroit market, and they were telling people how you can come and buy these properties from the land bank for a thousand bucks. And I'm like, yeah, but 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 what about the fact that they're they're undercapitalized? They come in buy this thing for a thousand bucks. They bought a liability and not an asset. They get in over their heads on the rehab. They can't keep up with the pace that the land bank requires them. It, it's stop buying cheap houses are expensive. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Cheap houses they can are kill you. they can yeah. absolutely kill you. They can ruin you. Learn how to do it the right way. Because if you learn how to do it the right way, you can get better quality deals um, and, and you have all the capital that you need. So don't buy something just because it's cheap, because oftentimes you're buying a liability and not an asset. It's not the price. It's the yield or the cash on cash or That's whatever right. you want to call it. Right. It's not the price. That's right. Yeah. So, Brian, where one more time, where can people find you? Uh, Brian Adamson official on Instagram and then Brian Adamson real estate on YouTube. Awesome, bud. Thanks again.